Are we live? Five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys, let me grab a sip of tea before I get going here. It's going to be a very sensitive, sensitive topic. That's right. That's good tea. That is good tea. It's extra good tea. What's up, guys? Okay. Here we go. I got to say this because I know it's going to serve a lot of people. You saw drugs, alcohol, transgenders, transgenders. Ooh, I'm walking on thin ice here. I'm about, about to be a little bit controversial here. But you know what? If I got something on my mind, what am I going to do? Am I going to hold back? Mm -mm. not going to hold back. Not on this one. Because the timing is actually perfect. Come on in, guys. I don't bite. Well, today I might bite. Today, today I might bite a little bit. I may bite a little bit. First of all, I said spoiler alert. If you are a fan of Survivor, of the reality show. Are we on? We're good? You guys can hear me? Okay. If you're a fan of the show Survivor, you guys know I'm a reality TV junkie, right? I am. I am. I admit it. My name is Mark and I'm a reality TV junkie. If you're a fan of Survivor, don't watch this now because I'm going to spoil something. If it's on your PVR, come back and watch this later. But there's such a valuable lesson to be learned here today and I had to push, I had to push go live. I had to do this because... I know from experience on this one. And I'm thinking, should I mind should I mind my own business? Should I mind my own business here? Cuz this is about minding your own business. And I'm thinking I'm going to do it because I I experience this every single day. Okay? So let's just get let, let's get to the spoiler. By the way, my tea's in here. I just use the Senator's Cup for, you know, support my team, to support my team. Okay. On Survivor, there's a contestant at Tribal Council who got called out for being transgender, okay? Now, it's, it's all acceptable. I'm not, I don't even want to get into that. But my point is, it was so bone-chilling like when I saw it, because nobody knew he was transgender. And it's no one's business but his own to tell other people that stuff, okay? So I, I don't understand. So I'm not going to say I understand that the guy was in a desperate situation. No, I don't understand. But I'm just going to, I'm going to say what happened. He outed, he, he called the guy out and said, he was talking about... Um, deceiving people or hiding things well, first of all it's none of your business sorry it's just not whether you're gay when, when, when it's someone's time to come out with something and it's their own it's their time it's not your time it's their time so very simply he goes have you told that deception that's what it was deception have you told anyone Zeke that you're transgender <sighs> even saying it over again I, I was I was watching it and I was like white it was like what how dare you so I, I and so did the whole panel see I'm getting pumped up a little bit because it's sh shut up it's none of your bit I won't get I won't get emotionally involved because it's a TV show and it happens all the day all, all, all the day all the day it happens all the time it happens to me every day but it's me, it's mostly fabricated or it's based on my past. We'll get to that in a second, but it's okay. It's okay. What I want to get into now is I believe in the first time in Survivor history, anyone who's a Survivor fan, you may want to correct me on this, but Jeff Probst, the host, basically said, look, we don't even need to vote. We know who's out of here. You guys see that? We know who's out of here. There's no no vote necessary. NVN, no vote necessary. Time to go. Do you guys all want do do we all know who's going home? 
We all know who's going home. I know there was a bit of heat with Jeff Probst, and there was a, uh, but the network was okay with it because he just made the call. He said, look, the, he broke the rules. He basically said, we all know who's going out. No vote. Bye-bye. Yeah, let me put out your torch. What is it? Your light is over, your flame. I should know this, but the tribe has spoken, you know? So it was over. He was gone. Now, I'm going to talk from two standpoints here because I come from both schools. I do. I, I, I've danced with the devil, guys. I, you know this. I've danced with the devil multiple times in my life. More in the past. I was more like dating or married to the devil for quite a while. That's a long time ago when I was I was in a full-on dance with the devil. In other words, it starts out as a, as a dance. Then it, you know you're going to, you know, he'll, he'll seduce you into a little slow dance. Then you'll be dating. Then you're married to him, next thing you know. And getting a divorce is extremely hard. Starts off as a little harmless dance. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about here, but that's kind of like the temptations everywhere in life. And some people are less immune to it than others. So, with that being said, for me to divorce myself from that dance, I still dance, but I dance with someone else. I found someone else. I found higher power. So I had to replace certain things. So my new dancing partner is God. Boom, there you go. I said it. So I'm dancing with God now. So it's like I've had to change my dance. The reason I'm saying that is because when Varner, which is the survivor guy, called out Zeke, there's two things here. Number one, you don't... You, you, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you the facts. When you throw someone under the bus or you talk about someone in a negative way, well, I shouldn't say negative, or you don't mind your own business, or you just talk shit about people, pardon my French, when it's not your business, okay? Even when you talk shit about people, other people, not the person you're talking shit about necessarily, and I'll explain that in a second here, but the other people around that you're talking shit to about someone else, they're going they're not going they're going to hate on you it's going to blow up in your face it absolutely will you know how many fans of my fans of mine yeah fans yeah you know how many followers of mine contact me quite a couple of times a week to tell me about what other people are saying about me i've learned some lessons though cuz revenge and all retaliation that, that no longer applies to me and i'll tell you why in a second but my point is that other people are not going to like you anymore if you talk shit about other people, not necessarily about them. The guy got voted, didn't get voted off. Varner got thrown off, basically, because he was doing that about someone else. So that's lesson number one. You should really hold back and not go publicly if you have hate on someone, if you have a bad opinion about someone. Do you think I like everybody? Hell no. There are some people I cannot stand. Do people know who I dislike? No. Do people know that I dislike anyone? No. Well, I guess you guys do now. But in general, we don't want to do that. You're better off to praise the people that you really admire and leave the other stuff to yourself. Keep it to yourself. That's lesson number one. I've, gone, I, I've learned my lesson by hating on other people publicly. Didn't turn out well for me. Okay, we'll put it that way. Now... Let's talk about the person who's getting the hate or getting talked about, okay, or being spoken negatively about, which is me. It happens almost on a daily basis. And the more you build your audience, the more you become a public figure, it's just going to happen more and more. It's inevitable. Brace yourself. Haters are coming. You need to handle this with so much, with more class than you've ever used. The best way is to be silent. It's hard, guys. It's tough. It's tough. But on Survivor, this is kind of like the topic. This is kind of the example we're using today. When Zeke, oh, it, it, it was bone chilling. I'm just thinking about it. It was crazy. He handled that with so much class instead of getting up and losing his cool and getting mad. He handled it with so much class. 
that I had a whole new respect for this guy. And so did the whole tribe that was there. And so did all of America, to be honest with you. Anyone watching the show challenge me. I was so impressed with how much class he handled that. I, would, I don't think I would have been able to. I, I, was, I wouldn't be that good. I would have snapped. I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that good. But we're wired that way to, to fight back, to instantly fight back. So the lesson here is keep your cool, guys, if that happens, when it happens to you. I, uh, I've been doing that for quite a while now, keeping my cool. And I'll give you a few examples. I would never say any names, but I'll give you a few examples. Um, I don't know. Okay. I've had problems in my life. I've had issues in my life. I've danced with the devil, like I said. Alcohol, drugs, absolutely. You name it, I've done it. I've been there. I've done it in the past, okay? Have I danced with it a bit along the way to completely divorce myself from them? I had to. It takes time. These things, they're always a work in progress. But when some of my proudest accomplishments in my life are beating the devil, they really are. And they're things I don't talk about because I don't think... They're anybody's businesses, really. So, I mean, now they're your business because I'm telling you, most of you know I've had struggles. Like, you guys just know. I've, I've talked about them before. But when people revisit your past and t twist them to become current events, that hurts. That hurts because the work involved in transforming yourself, as they say in Survivor, the metamorphosis is sometimes the most proudest moments you have as an individual. However, when people keep bringing it up and bringing it up and bringing it up as a current thing, Mark Lalonde is a serious drug addict, like 24-7. And I, don't, I won't even go into certain things. That's just one of them. There's so many. I'm, a, I'm also a scam artist. I'm, oh, I, won't go, I won't go into all the things that come at me. But it takes a while. to, to You have to soak it in and just let it go and learn to let it go right and what happens is the people that are talking the shit is they're going to get the shit it's going to come to them so be very aware of that be aware of that as people coming to you and giving you personal attacks be aware of it that way and be aware of it also as the person giving them you don't want to talk about other people to other people I'm telling you, it's I, I, I've tasted both spectrums here. I've, I've been, I've experienced both. I will continue to experience hate coming at me. I can't control that, unfortunately. But what I can control is how I handle it. And for all the haters out there that are throwing shit out there, they really are talking shit about other people, here's something you want to keep in mind and really think about this. My friend Larry Hawkman said, put a... Put a post of this on Facebook. It was a picture. It was an image. And it resonated with me so much that I'm going to share it with you. And you guys know I'm going to screw it up. I screw up quotes all the time. But it said, before, oh, here we go. Me and my quotes. Every time I try to really get them, I don't think it was as much a quote or a saying. It's like when someone comes and talks negatively about someone else to me, as soon as they leave the room, I know that they're going to talk, that they have the potential to talk negatively about me to someone else. So whenever you go up to someone and start bitching about someone else and say, I hate this, I heard this, I hate this, gossipers, gossipers, negative gossipers, be very aware that the person you're saying this to is going to look at you differently. They may not say it. They may not even know it. It may be subconscious. But there's going to be something inside of them that says, oh, that's kind of poisonous. I don't know if I like that person anymore. Or, and they mean, like I said, they, they're not going to say it. How dare you say that about these people? It's none of your business. Or what, how do, what do you know? Like, do you guys know me? Do you really know me? Who are you to judge? Anyways, in general, those people are actually going to dislike you more. So it's going to blow up in your face. Like I said, they're not going to tell you. And more importantly, they may not even be aware of it at a conscious level. They may say, oh, maybe they're right. And everyone loves to gossip. It's a poisonous drug gossiping. It's the worst. <sighs> it's going to happen anyways. So, guys, I got to leave you with that. I had to get it off my chest. 
There's nothing like a good old Facebook Live, right? Before I have time to delete it, I wonder how many people are going to see it. So with that in mind, basically, guys, it's not going to serve you to talk badly about anyone. And if you have a chance to check out that Survivor episode, you'll know what I mean. It was like, it, it, it was, it proved both points. Don't meddle or talk shit about other people when it's none of your business. More importantly, when you don't even know. You don't know the underlying information. So it's not your place, okay? Think about that. And then think about what it's doing to you, yourself, by doing this. It will blow up in your face. Believe me, it will. It has for me. And I see it happening for others. I have eyes. I got eyes. I can see. I, I look in social media. And I guess the only thing, the most important nugget here is, well, don't do it. And number two is when it comes to you, take the high road. Don't fight back. And again, this is, these are the opinions of Mr. Lalone. They may not be shared by the public. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is me here. That's why I love social media. So guys, have an awesome day. You guys know where I'm going. You guys know what I'm about to do, right? Okay, guys, have a good day. And uh, I hope this wasn't too harsh or controversial for y'all. Peace.